we're now at the physical camera. Um, I've reset the view, so I'll just explain roughly what I did. Went to the environment panel and the map. I've put that um, the intensity back to one. Um, I've changed the size from 10 to five and knocked the subdivisions back down to eight. And the um, in multiplier for the map, um, I've just kept that back to one. So over to the camera. So as I mentioned, uh, any sort of knowledge of cameras, um, focal lengths, shutter speed, f-stop, and film speed, or the ISO value, will come in handy. Now these settings don't mirror the camera that well because what should happen is if I change the ISO value from 100 to 200, it would make the film twice as sensitive as it currently is. And what that would mean would be that it would take half the amount of time to expose the plate or the film correctly. Similarly with F numbers. Now the F numbers normally go from something like 1.6 up to 22 and there's I can't remember exactly how many steps there are in between but what a camera tries to do is replicate the human eye but it never can because the eye is much more sensitive than the camera lens. Even the best ones they have to have these f-stop values that um, allow a certain amount of light in through the lens to uh, expose the film or the plate. So the f-stop ha has a relationship to the depth of field as well. So a f value of 22, for example, is a smaller aperture hole. So what's it actually doing when you press the trigger of the camera? then the camera lens opens a very small amount. There's a, a series of blades um, which open and close very quickly. And the smaller the hole, the less light that comes in to the camera to expose. But what you also get with that um, higher value is a longer depth of field. So things in the foreground and things in the background are in focus. So you're always trading off um, when you take pictures with a camera, you've got to try to get the exposure set right. You've got to try to get the aperture um, right for the depth of field. You've also got to get the shutter speed right. Because when this um, aperture opens, based on the value that we've given there, so 8 is somewhere in the middle, a low value is going to make it um, much wider. So the hole is fully opened, as they refer to. And so more light comes in through the setting of the shutter speed. Now, if you hover over this, it tells you that that number is an inverse uh, value, which means that 300 means it's one three hundredth of a second. So let's say I change this value from 300 to 150. That would mean that the shutter is open for a longer period of time. So more light is coming in to expose the plate based on these settings. So you've always got a trade-off between these three things. The aperture's opening, which is the F number, the sensitivity of the film, which is the ISO value, and the time in which the aperture is open. So I'll just explain via some renders what I mean by that. And so if I set this down from 300 to one, that means that it's now gone from 300th of a second to one second. So it's the shutter speed is going to be open for 300 times the length that it was set for originally. I'll leave these two settings the same. So what we should expect is there's much, much more light coming in through our camera. So it's going to be massively overexposed. So I'll just hit the render. I've realized that there's a button here that does that rendering for us. And notice that it's pretty, pretty much a blizzard going on, a whiteout. I think we can just see a few little bits going on of the feet, but this is what's happened and you will often get this um, through no fault of your own you just might just sort of flick a button prying, trying out some bits and pieces and um, you realize that uh, you can't see anything that's simply because 
we've got far too much light coming in to uh, expose our scene. So I'll put this back up to 300. What happens if we don't use a physical camera? Then we've got to go and sort of modify the environment setting. So I'll just render with out the physical camera turned on and we get this which is a massively overexposed and without the camera dealing with the amount of light that's coming in to render the scene then it's the environment really is all you've got to play around with and some of these settings up here okay so we'll make sure that the physical camera is turned on so to control the amount of light the higher the number 22 that's a much smaller hole now for the light to come in. So we've set that back to 300, 300 of a second. This is now 22 times, um, not 22 times bigger, but about four or five times smaller the hole than it was previously. If I do a render, you'll see that it does get sort of duskier in there. Okay, and the ISO, if I knock that down to 50, what would happen on a camera is that basically half the the film is half as sensitive as it was so this should be twice as dark but when I render this it isn't it's a little bit darker but it's not much so this is where the sort of the limits of um, the camera settings and all of these things uh, do sort of not mirror exactly what a camera would do if i whack that up to a thousand it's a thousandth of a, a, a thousandth of a second um leave everything else the same and then render it again it is getting darker okay so this is really how you can control um, the quality of the light that you've got here it's also there is more to the environment um, than I've mentioned previously and that's to do with the background settings and the amount of light that comes in through that but uh, we'll cover that uh, later on but I just want to make sure that you're aware that this physical camera which is the thing that's basically allowing the light to expose our scene um, needs to be considered we've got still movie and video camera um, we've got a white balance value there which we'll just leave at that because I don't think it does much if I change that to normally you'd look for a white balance pick up sort of gray area on a on your picture if you were sort of trying to balance the light out on it but it doesn't seem to do much with this the white balance is all about whether the, the image is cooler um, sort of bluer or warmer, yellow or yellower. So I'll just set that back to white. Now there are some other bits and pieces that would be worth looking at. So if I set the settings as they were, so that's 300, this is 8, and this is 100. Um, and just give it a quick render. So we're back where we were. Zoom factor. So this is going to allow us to zoom in. So if I just turn that into two then we're going to zoom in twice as much so you basically get closer there you go you don't have much control over where it is it's just going to zoom in where it's pointing change that back to one distortion I set that to one and render and we get kind of a bit of a distortion on the background still almost fish eye so crank this up to 10. We just have a little globe effect going on. I'm not sure what use that could be for anyone, but anyway, that's what it does. Don't go back to one, go back to zero. And lens shift. Um, this brings it in as well, I think. If you change that to one. Yeah, you got some sort of weird thing going on with the, um, the perspective on that. So again, you're looking at point values here, so 0.5 is gonna give us kind of a lens shift of that. So it's gonna exaggerate 
the perspective. Um, what else have we got? So sort of override focal length. That's this thing. So um, again, that's going to be the distance factor. The further away, the smaller the number. The closer in, the higher the number. So a portrait photographer would have a camera lens with a focal length of about 90 to 100, 70 to 100, I suppose. So if we set this to, say, 90, what I'm expecting is to be zoomed in a bit closer to uh, Steve. Let's put that back to zero and render. So again, that's kind of zoomed in a bit. I'll say this will all be fairly obvious to those of you who are familiar with lenses and cameras, but if you're not, then this is a very quick overview of what's going on. Um, turn that down to about 20 and that's going to step us further away from it. So if you want to get a bit more space in your scene, then that's one way to do it. But again, you do, the trade-off is distortion. Um, another thing to point out within SketchUp is you do get this distortion going on there and there. And that's to do with um, the zoom factor. And we see the field of view here that set to 35 degrees. Now that's um, focal length field of view, similar sort of thing. So if I changed the value in here to um, say 90, then it's zoomed out. So it's the sort of different way around to this thing. If I change it to 35, we're zooming in, but we still get this sort of three point perspective going on. It's often better if you want vertical lines, when you set your scenes in SketchUp to go to camera setting and two point perspective, and then just juggle it a bit. So then you do get verticality on your lines. It's disappeared now, so just make sure that's two point perspective and just try not to wiggle it about too much. So it still says two point perspective there. And then when we render, you get vertical walls. Okay, so it's not like you're standing against the face of a building and looking up at it and watching the perspective sort of change in front of you, which is what it's meant to do. But sometimes in SketchUp, it's just a little bit easier to set your two point perspective to get, especially these front leading lines to get them a bit more vertical so it doesn't look a bit weird. Uh, so if we take settings back and let's untick the override field of view or focal length and render it again. It all looks a little bit more believable when these things are vertical. Okay, so that's a little bit about um, the physical camera. This is con controlling sort of light that we get into the scene. Um, the next one that we'll look at would be the background settings and how they can affect the light as well.